Glad you could join us here to get on our news desk on QTV. The headlines. A 63-year-old Zambian national has died on the bus in Botswana at Pandamatenga, which is about 300 kilometers northwest of Francis Town. The Minister of Finance has approved a 200 million kwacha loan for the University of Zambia as additional funding to pay off retirees owed by the university. Here now is the news in detail. A 63-year-old Zambian national has died on a bus in Botswana at Pandamatenga, which is about 300 kilometers northwest of Francis Town. Information reaching the Zambian mission in Habiron suggests that Evans Mwala was traveling from Habiron to Livingstone in Zambia. The late Mr. Mwala is said to have complained of chest pains before the bus left Francis Town on the 5th of January 2020. And as the bus proceeded with the journey, the deceased requested to move near the bus's exit point where he was found lifeless when other passengers wanted to disembark at Pandamatenga. He was then rushed to a local clinic where he was pronounced dead upon arrival. A report was made to the Botswana Police Service over the matter. The body of the deceased was de deposited at Kasane Primary Hospital, awaiting post-mortem, and Mr. Mola's next of kin has since been informed. Zambia's High Commissioner to Botswana, Mwanseka Peya, says the mission in Habiton has received the news of Mr. Mola's death with sadness. This is contained in a statement issued by First Secretary for Press and Public Relations at the Zambian Mission in Botswana, Kasavo Kalusa. The Ministry of Finance has approved a 200 million kwacha loan for the University of Zambia, UNSA, as additional funding to pay off retirees owed by the university from 2011 to date. Higher Education Minister Brian Mushimba has announced that the loan was approved last week. Dr. Mushimba says this follows the realization that the three-year financing strategic plan in which UNSA retirees were to be cleared was not enough to get them off the payroll. Speaking at a media briefing in Lusaka, Dr. Mshimba has explained that this is what has led to the Ministry to propose and push that the Ministry of Finance approves a loan for the university. Dr. Mshimba states that the approval of the loan is thus a momentous occasion. He says the retirees in question saved honorary and diligently and therefore it is right and just to ensure that they get their accrued benefits. But since 2011, we have uh, those retirees on our books. Uh, through the financing strategy that I spoke about, some have been cleared. Um, but as I alluded to, the rate of clearing them was too slow that uh, we found ourselves spinning our wheels and not able to get many more off the books. And that became a huge burden to the university of carrying two separate payrolls for the active and also for the people that are sitting at home. In terms of the amount that has been approved by Minister of Finance for University of Zambia to get, it's a 200 million kwacha. And uh, the calculations and the calculus that we've looked at is that um, this 200 million kwacha will be able to clear uh, the rest of the retirees off of the books of Invest of Zambia and uh, as a consequence then that separate payroll. That Meanwhile, Dr. Mshimba has demanded for a public apology from the University of Zambia Lecturers and Researchers Union over its recent idiot remarks as he describes the utterances as painful, disappointing and regrettable. Recently, Unzalaru General Secretary Kovin Mambwe at a public appearance said only idiots would consider voting for the Patriot Front if elections were to be held today. But Dr. Mshimba feels that the same way that the utterances were made publicly should be the same way the apology must be made. Government consistently has released the funding. There is no, we are not one month behind, two months behind. No, we are current as per that funding cycle. So for anyone to disregard this, which is common and known, and start issuing blanket threats and disrespecting the citizenry of this country by calling them idiots, that I will not stand by. That is extremely disappointing. And when I spoke to Unzalaru yesterday, I voiced this concern. I shared the, with them these views. Their uh, Secretary General apologized. But the apology to me in a private conversation is not enough. 
when you went on radio, on TV, and, and, and blasted and insulted everyone from the highest office to your management with a level of impunity and uh, lack of civility that is uncalled for. That, that, that apology to, to, a, to a private conversation to me is really, it falls short. And uh, uh, they need to do more. They've done a lot of damage. And how they recover from this damage, I don't know. Thank you. Zambia Army has dispelled reports circulating on social media that it has embarked on a recruitment exercise. Zambia Army spokesperson Luswe Posininza says the Army does not advertise for recruitment on social media. Colonel Sininza states that the Army does not also charge any fees during recruitment of either officers or soldiers. He says it is only criminals that have copied the Zambia Army Buffalo logo and are releasing the list of the purported successful candidates on social media. Colonel Sininza explains that there are, however, procedures to be followed during a recruitment exercise, such as advertising the recruitment in both print and electronic media. He notes that thereafter a selection of a selection board is constituted, after which a list of successful candidates is published in the media. Colonel Sininza has since warned those involved in misleading the public on the purported recruitment exercise to stop immediately as they risk being prosecuted. He has also urged those who have been swindled to help the police and other law enforcement agencies with information that would lead to the arrest of the culprits. This is contained in a press statement issued to Zanis in Osaka on Wednesday. Residents of selected parts of Osaka's Chinama, Mindstone and PHI areas have been advised not to consume the turbid water that is coming out of their taps. Osaka Water and Supply Sanitation Company, which on Tuesday received a report of turbid water in Chinama, Mindstone and PHI areas, has confirmed that the water has been contaminated by dirt. Wasco Managing, that's Marketing and Public Relations Manager Patson Piri, has explained that as a result of the turbidity, the utility has shut down the 24-inch main water supply line. Mr. Piri says this is to allow for inspection of the pipe and repairs. He has cautioned that despite this shutdown, turbid water in the system may still find its way to the taps, and therefore, as a precautionary measure, residents are advised not to consume the water. Starting. In connection with the turbidity we experienced yesterday in Chinama, Mindstone, and PHI, uh, we have uh, you know, re re received reports from customers and even ourselves who have done some investigations. The turbidity levels have uh, gone down. There are a few spots where to eventually clear. Because we, we shut down supply, so the debt did not completely clear. So we are hoping that um, it will be clearing uh, as time goes. And uh, also we're on the ground trying to make to take measures so that we clear it completely through our engineers. They are actually on the ground right now, and we are expecting this, uh, this problem to come to an end completely today. And uh, Mr. Piri has disclosed that water supply in some parts of Chirundu has been suspended due to a fault in the utility's eastern side production machine which occurred on Tuesday. He says engineers are on the ground to rectify the situation and ensure that the water supply is restored to the affected areas as soon as possible. There is a, we are supplied by two pumps, two production systems. One of them has succumbed. The one which was given to us by the Zambia Revenue Authority has succumbed and it's not working. So our engineers are on the ground trying to fix the the, the system so that all of them can be online and then we can start supplying to the whole district. But as things stand now, we're just supplying to about 70% of the district or, so, or somewhere, somewhere, somewhere about that. But we're on the ground, we're trying to fix the, the, the problem. I think we should be resuming normal supply by the end of the day. If the, uh, Support for vulnerable children and active leadership founder Eugene Machona says the distribution of farming inputs for the 2019-2020 farming season has not been successful. Mr. Machona has told QTV News that the distribution of farming inputs for this season cannot be deemed to be 100% when some farmers have not yet received their inputs. He has warned that Zambia will face yet another crop failure if farmers do not receive promised FISIP. 
Mr. Machona has since called on government to address all the challenges that farmers incur when accessing farming inputs during farming seasons. You know, you can imagine we are, we are in January, other farmers have not received their farming input, and that's the source of uh, concern. Because we are, we are just coming from a drought, from climate you know, uh, issues, from hunger situations, to a point where by now, God is blessing us with the lands, and we expect farmers to be given farming input on time, so that they can be able to mitigate this uh, crisis we had in 2019. But if there is late uh, deliveries of farming input, we will still be talking about the same hunger, even in this year. So our appeal to the Minister of Agriculture is, let's prioritize farming input distributions so that we don't have to record another climate issue or another hunger situation in our country in this new year. We have seen how favorable the rains are. What we need is our farmers to receive farming input on time. And in due course, we'll also be uh, uh, submitting our submission to the Minister of uh, Agriculture on the plan that we have as Suvuko Enyu, that we think it will lessen you know, the pressure that the ministry is currently undergoing through as far as farming input distribution is concerned. The antiretroviral drugs, ARVs, at Kalulushi General Hospital in the Copper Belt is on the verge of expiring as they are in excess. This came to light when the Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary in charge of technical services, Kennedy Malama, conducted a tour of the hospital. We have more in this report. Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary Dr. Kenneth Malama dated Kalulushi District and Kitwe District and conducted tours in various selected health facilities to check on commodity availability and general operations. The permanent secretary, who was flagged by Copper Belt Health Director Dr. Robert Zulu and other senior Ministry of Health personnel, visited about five health facilities. The tours were preceded by the launch of the first ever health workers' hepatitis B vaccination project, which is aimed at protecting health workers against the virus. The PS conducted the tours, starting with Kalulushi General Hospital, which proved to be commodity secure, but it had an excess stock of TLEARVs, which risk expiring. As with, uh, with the ARVs, I think it's, uh, it's all right for Kalulushi General Hospital. I think we just uh, we just have the concern with uh, one drug TLD which which we risk as expiring because expiring. the quantities are quite a lot. Okay. So we have since engaged uh, the provincial pharmacies and we are we are planning on redistributing okay. to other need facilities. Mm. The PS was elated by the commodity availability and he made this comment on the excess TLE ARV drugs. I think this is what we would like to see in a facility because hospitals are there to treat our people. So if your hospital doesn't have life-saving medication, that does not hunger well. And where you see you may have excess, you trigger through PhD so that you can redistribute because we wouldn't want to see any drug going to waste. Zambia is big, we need to ensure that we share. Among other issues that the permanent secretary brought out during the tours was the need to prioritize high volume facilities to the electronic smart system. They take space, not easy to stress. And when our patient moves to another place which is using smart care, again it's a problem. So we prioritize the high volume facilities like this because it will make a big difference. The PS ended his tours for the day at Mlenga Clinic in Kitwe, where the nurse in charge, Lucy Pateli, explained that the clinic has suffered theft due to the load shading the country is experiencing as it is near bars and hence criminals tend to take advantage when it is dark. Sometimes they will book here, but when it comes to delivery, they will choose in the AK and the one That's we still receive others. And security and the issue of the community threatening theft. Uh, there is theft actually because we are just next to the bars around, so the place is not safe, more especially in the night. Yeah. And this will change, they take advantage of that. You have a guard? We have one guard who is not. Uh, okay. Favorite Kando, QTV News. Political scientist from the University of Zambia, Alex Ngoma, has called on President Ed Galungu to seriously address the welfare of retirees who are camping 
at the Ministry of Justice. President Lungu has gone on a four-day annual retreat to Eastern Province. Dr. Ngome has told Q News that President Lungu should take advantage of the retreat he has taken to Eastern Province to reflect on how best he can support the people of Zambia socially, especially the retirees. He has noted that there are some people that are dissatisfied with what is hap happening in the country. Dr. Ngome has acknowledged that the concerns raised by the retirees are genuine, thus they need to be given the much-needed attention. But during that race, which I think is a working holiday, uh, I think that it is important for the president to really to pay particular attention to the social aspect of our, our life as a society. It appears that uh, uh, there are some people that are, that are dissatisfied. I have seen, for example, you know, the retirees that have been camping at uh, the Ministry of Justice, and their cause is very genuine. So while the government has tried very hard to push our agenda in infrastructure development, I would suggest that during the retreat, the president should also uh, reflect on how best to support people, the people of Zambia socially. And Federation of Free Trade Unions of Zambia, FFTUZ President Chingati Mshika, is hoping that the president will come up with changes that will improve the economy, which he said is deteriorating. And we are expected at the labor movement, there will be changes that are going to help us even improve our economy. You know, uh, changes like uh, how do we run, uh, I mean, the, 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 the higher tariff that we have, the, 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 obviously the, the, the inhalation of power, we are talking about also the, the, general, the, the, the general outcry out there that the conditions uh, of living has become uh, very, very, very hard in our nation. We need to have solutions. And we hope the, the, the president, even as he come out of, uh, back from the retreat, will be able to hear and him make a statement that is going to give a policy guideline, a policy direction of the nation and where the nation is going. The Commuters' Rights Association of Zambia has expressed doubt that there was wide consultation in arriving at the decision to increase bus fares in the country. Association President Aaron Kamuti says it is shocking that the Road Transport and Safety Agency, RTSA, went ahead to announce the upward adjustments without engaging all relevant stakeholders. Mr. Kamuti states that his association foresees an increased bus fares impacting negatively on the many Zambians that rely on public transport. He says if his association had its way, it would have, it would have reversed the decision to increase the bus fares. And uh, we expect that the uh, rights are before they can pronounce the new bus fare, they should involve all the stakeholders. In fact, we are the first ones to know so that we try to sensitize the traveling public. The challenges uh, are many. You know, January comes with a lot of uh, uh, challenges. Here we are talking about uh, uh, children going back to school, for those who are in boarding schools, for those who are in long distance, and also for uh, the people who are coming from the festive season and people have no money, people have, have not been paid yet uh, and people are, are still spending on uh, schools and the other uh, needed uh, essentials. And how do we rush into just pronounce that we've increased the fares? I thought we would have waited maybe until month end so that people can make their budgets and adjust on their, their spendings. Not the way it has been done. We are very disappointed and it's so regrettable. If there was a way, we would have petitioned Ratsa and the operator so that sh sh this should be stopped. Fifteen people of one family are admitted to Thompson District Hospital in Luansha District five days after eating suspected poisoned food. The family is comprised of five male adults, two female adults and eight children aged between 13 and 2 years old. The Russia District Commissioner, Pat Patrick Maipampe, has confirmed the development to Zanis in an interview that two of the said family members are in a critical condition. Mr. Maipampe, who visited them in hospital, says the rest are said to be stable. He has identified some of the male patients as Linus Mwene, 42, Crispin Mwene, 18, Hendrix Mwene, 16, Vincent Mwene, 24, and Bernard Suwale, Nasimwale, 33. Mr. Maipampe says the females are Harriet Simonza, 32, and Modred Kanyendwa, 38. The victims of the suspected food poisoning presented severe vomiting 
and diarrhea after having shima with chicken in Kamifungu area in at Linas Mwene's farm where the family lives. The incident happened on the 3rd of January 2020 when the family consumed food that was allegedly prepared on New Year's Day. Zambia Chamber of Mines Chief Executive Officer Sokwani Chilembo has observed the need to restore the country's mining industries to growth. Mr. Chilembo says his chamber is concerned that the increased electricity tariffs will have an effect on the mining sector. He says the electricity tariff escalation forms part of what is making the mining sector uncompetitive. Well, the impact, the, 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 the mining sector was uh, insulated from, uh, and I have to say here, from the power challenge situation, most of the mines on the copper belt, I think there were only a few instances in which mines outside of the copper belt experienced power shortage. So we've been insulated from the power shortage situation, but the tariff uh, escalation is a concern. It all forms, forms part of what is making us uncompetitive and which is compromising potential growth. Because you see, if the mining industry constitutes 55% of uh, offtake in power, how do you invest in power if the mining industry is not growing? So we are de risk there is a need to do this and kill two birds with one stone. Restore this industry to growth, restore the, and, and de-risk the power industry at the same time. A 35-year-old Zambian national is stranded in Lima, Peru, where she was lured for greener pastures in 2015. Nasishemo Muango, who is currently experiencing ill health and is jobless in the Peruvian capital, disclosed her ordeal to the Zambian mission in Brazil. Ms. Mwango has narrated that she came to Peru after being invited by a male acquaintance to sample tourism in Lima. She says a male acquaintance later abandoned her and has not been seen since then. Ms. Mwango says this prompted her to start doing what she has referred to as little jobs to survive but later got sick. And Zambia's ambassador to Brazil with extra accreditation to Peru, Alfreda Kansembe, has bemoaned the plight of the Zambian national. Dr. Kansembe says diplomats at the Zambian embassy in Brasilia have pledged to buy an air ticket for Ms. Mwango to fly her back to Zambia from Lima via Sao Paulo and Johannesburg to South Africa. That's still soccer. She has, however, warned others not to fail prey to such schemes of human trafficking. The Peruvian government, through its mission in Brasilia, informed the Zambian embassy in Brazil of the plight of Ms. Mwango when she was hospitalized in Lima. This is contained in a statement issued to Cunius by First Secretary for Press and Public Relations of the Zambian Mission in Brazil, Grace Makoane. Lusaka Province Permanent Secretary Elas Kamanga has called for the inclusion of cushion in the effects of climate change in all district development coordinating committees, DDCC's plans and programs. Mr. Kamanga says the issues of climate change is here to stay, hence the need to include a component of combating the effects in all district plans and programs. He was speaking during the Rufunza Integrated Development Planning Stakeholders meeting held at the constituency office. And Mr. Kamanga is disappointed that Rufunza, Chongwe and Kafio districts, which are pilots in the development of the integrated development plans, have delayed to finish their documents on time. He has since given them an ultimatum of up to 31st January 2020 to finish and submit their documents to his office. The climatic uh, situation in which our country finds itself, uh, the issues of climate change can no longer be uh, uh, grappled upon. We need to accept and acknowledge that uh, climate change is here with us and uh, because climate change is here with us, uh, all our programs, our plans, uh, must um, have a common component of uh, climate resilience. How do our programs, our plans respond to issues of uh, climatic change? The climate change issues are still there with us. And uh, Rufunsa District Commissioner Julia Chama has thanked the government for including her district on the pilot of the IDPs. Development plan for Rufunza. I'm sure all of you, you are aware that this document is very, very important that we start utilizing it, especially now in 2020. Rufunza was declared in 2012 permanent secretary as a district. Before then, it was, um, it was a satellite for Chongwe. So now that we are a district on our own, it is important that we have such a document. And I know that Rufunza is one of the districts 
that was chosen to be a pilot in district for this, for this IDP. And I want our um, members of DDCC to know that this document, it needs to be completed and we need to start utilizing it in Rofonsa. Monza District Council has bought a tractor backloader, TBL, using money sourced from the 2018 Constituency Development Fund. Monza Town Council Public Relations Officer Kanchele Kanchele says the money was a contribution by Wengwa, Momba and Monza Central Constituencies. Mr. Kanchele says with the purchase TBL, the council has drawn up a program to clean up Monza Town of all garbage heaps. He says the program is for a period of 21 days. We recently uh, purchased a, a T, T, TLB, that's a tractor uh, backhoe loader, which is going to help the council with uh, a number of uh, things. It will help with uh, uh, drainage clearing, it will help with uh, uh, clearing of uh, heaps of garbage, which is uh, in the CBD and uh, just around the the district. Uh, starting uh, uh, second January, we we started the, we started with the program of uh, uh, removing the garbage from the heaps of garbage which, which is in town uh, using the same machine which arrived uh, just before Christmas. Um, we have uh, targeted uh, we have put a program that in, within 21 days we should clear all the garbage which is in town and the surrounding areas. Uh, using the same uh, machine. It, it has ha added to, to the machinery in terms of when it comes to, to doing the roads in uh, rural areas. We, we just had the grader as a district which we were using but now we are able to use it even the TO. That news item concludes our news at this hour but before we go here is a recap of stories in the headlines. A 63 year old Zambian national has died on a bus in Botswana at Pandamatenga which is about 300 kilometers northwest of Francis Town. The Ministry of Finance has approved a 200 million kwacha loan for the University of Zambia as additional funding to pay off retirees owed by the university. That's the news. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. God bless.